I lean back some in my overstuffed chair, taking a minute to finish up the rest of the soda. Although my nose had gotten used to the scent of the night jasmine, my brain was still in a bizarre, aroused state. The flowers, the smell reminded me of something, and it was itching all the spinning gears in my mind because I couldn't quite remember exactly what it was. Dan was studying me with quiet eyes. I didn't know how to get in touch with you, he finally said. Not until you signed up for my game on the website and registered with your email address. Okay, I said, idly wiggling around the orange soda can with my fingers. It seemed like we were finished with Bob, so I didn't know what else Dan wanted from me. Still, I knew you would sign up eventually. I was confident you would anyway. You really liked the game, and I heard rumors about you and Elise. Well, I heard about you being chewed out by Elise here and there. So I knew you were still in the area. He broke eye contact at this point, looking down at his desk at the character sheets and his eyes kind of scanning left and right across his desktop. Still, he said, I said to be patient, because patience is a virtue. As soon as I had your contact information, I would reach out. My soda can made an odd plink sound as I pressed my thumb into the metal a little too hard. Where are you going with this, Dan? He pursed his lips up some, looked me over, then opened up one of his desk drawers. He pulled out a black nylon bag wrapped in a long, pencil-thin braid of naturally red hair. My eyes landed on the hair, a lock of hair that I recognized and knew by heart, and time just stopped. It was like some veil suddenly parted, and a torrential downpour of memories came flooding back. That Night in the Park by Joseph McAvoy Available for purchase on Kindle and Amazon Direct